It started with a bang. All over Chicago, they're tearing down the cinder block dinosaurs known here simply as the projects. It's the largest demolition of public housing in the nation's history. And look what's taking its place, a bold experiment. Brand new condominiums costing some people a half million dollars while others live here for free. And the catch is? There isn't any. The catch is follow the building rules and enjoy yourself in a wonderful brand new home. They're finally tearing down Cabrini Green. For decades, the red and white tenements near downtown Chicago have been a blot on the skyline, the nation's most infamous public housing project, synonymous with gangs, drugs, misery, and murder. And Cabrini Green is just the beginning. The plan is to replace all of Chicago's projects with beautiful new mixed income developments. That means rich and poor living side by side. So what do you get when you take the country's most disadvantaged families, add in some young professionals, and build them a brand new neighborhood? Chicago is finding out. The experiment is already underway. It started with a bang and a round of applause. All over Chicago, they're tearing down the cinder block dinosaurs known here simply as the projects. They've been a disaster with generations of children raised in the squalor, but no more. By the end of 2009, all 53 of Chicago's public housing high-rises will be gone. It's the largest demolition of public housing in the nation's history. It will uproot some 40,000 people, many of whom have never lived anywhere else but public housing. People like Larry Sargent. What did you think when you heard that the city was going to tear down your building? I was glad. <laughs> but you were going to lose your home. I'd rather sleep on a cardboard box in the streets rather than keep going through what I was going through. In Cabrini Green? Yes. A, a child at 12 and 11 years old with a gun, you know, you don't know where you might get it from. Larry Sargent grew up in Cabrini Green, but when he took on sole custody of his baby son, he knew he had to break the cycle and get out. He never imagined that out might mean this, a brand new $70 million development just 100 yards from Cabrini Green. It's called Northtown Village, 261 condos and townhomes that represent one of the most daring concepts in public housing today. 79 families will have the chance to move out of Cabrini Green and move in here next to someone who bought one of these brand new homes at market rate. A three bedroom top of the line town home like that costs nearly $500,000. The identical unit next door could be reserved for a Cabrini Green family whose rent is subsidized by the government. The project started two years ago with a complex mix of public and private funding. The man on the ground was Peter Holston, an idealistic developer selling this vision of gentrification with a twist. So here's someone coming in and buying a $500,000 townhome, and we're telling him in the sales trailer, or her, that uh, you will be living, uh, the, the townhome next to you, which is no different than yours, is going to have a Cabrini Green ha family in it. Basically, someone who's gotten it for free. Basically, yeah. And these people are not turning away. They're buying them. Mark and Amanda Tomlinson bought one. Oh, so young fun. professionals you and just engaged then, they stopped by the sales trailer the day it opened. <laughs> And I told her for kicks, bring the checkbook. And it was just a feeding frenzy in there. I mean, everybody was just screaming and yelling. And th there was one lady in there that... Just yelling at her husband, just buy whatever is available. It doesn't matter what it looks like, just buy whatever's left. The Tomlinsons bought this three-bedroom townhouse on the spot. Incredibly, all the units sold before they were even built. But why would anyone invest in a neighborhood like this? because Cabrini Green and now Northtown Village sit just a mile away from Chicago's ritziest strip. There's tons of shops, great stores, restaurants, and we've already seen huge big box retailers coming in. You just got to realize, you, you go two blocks one way, we're in the middle of a public housing, we go two blocks another way, we're at Banana Republic, so. <laughs> Finding buyers was easy. The hard sell was convincing public housing residents to apply. 
Peter Holston found that out when he made his pitch to a skeptical crowd at this town hall meeting at Cabrini Green. We have two parks in the unit. One park will have a, a top lot, and the other park will have like a splash fountain. Cabrini residents, already angry about being pushed out, thought Peter Holston's offer sounded too good to be true. Where are the units that are ready right now? These people are amazed. They're waiting to get taken advantage of. They're waiting to get screwed. They're waiting to, like, something go wrong. So they're sitting there the whole time saying, well, what's the catch? Exactly. Exactly. And the catch is? There isn't any. The catch is follow the building rules and enjoy yourself in a wonderful brand new home. But for many coming from the chaos of Cabrini Green, the building rules are barrier enough. On top of the obvious, no drugs, no loitering, no loud music, there's perhaps the hardest expectation of all, that they fit in with their wealthy neighbors. For Larry Sargent, it all seemed overwhelming. Did you think you had a shot? Not really. You know, the way it was described as mixed incomes and, you know, there's going to be condominiums and townhouses and coach houses. I'm like, I'll just check it out, you know. But to get into Northtown Village, Larry Sargent and the other applicants would have to pass a screening process so tough that many people simply dropped out. There's a home inspection, a criminal background check, and mandatory drug tests. Let's just say there's some addiction issues or violence issues or something like that, you're going to have to fix it. At the time, Candace Howell was a vice president at Peter Holston's development company. She was in charge of the screening process. We're looking for things, red flags like criminal behavior against property, criminal behavior against people, guns, drugs, convictions, because we're not miracle workers. With that in mind, you might think Larry Sargent's past would disqualify him from landing a spot at the new development. He spent his youth trying to escape all that was wrong with Cabrini Green, joining the Army at 17 to get away. But after six years, he ended up right back where he started and spent the last 15 years struggling with drug addiction. But when Northtown Village held its first orientation meeting, Larry Sargent was one of the first to arrive. Our role, our goal, is to try to identify the things that's going to stop you from succeeding and help you move through those things, right? Candace Howell made it clear from day one Northtown Village would be nothing like Cabrini Green. She literally gave lessons on how to get along there. You get good neighbor training. How do I go out there and be a good neighbor? You know, I mean, maybe some people don't need to know how to do that, but when you've been, like, watching out your door and wondering who's next door, you know, for all the time you've been in public housing, you might not want to go be no good neighbor. Am I saying that you're going to go out there and set up barbecue grills with the folks next door? Not necessarily so. We're going to have a bunch of social events, and we're going, to, we're going to push it. Push, push, push the concept of building a community. Sherry Wade was desperate for a safer community. A run of bad luck landed her at Cabrini Green eight years ago. For her two youngest children, Travis, 12, and Jamila, 9, the projects have been a prison. To keep them safe, Wade says, she keeps them indoors. Kids are supposed to go outside and play and ride bikes, and mine don't do that. So the ones who grew up in the project don't even know how to ride a bicycle? No, they don't. Larry Sargent and Sherry Wade both made it to the next stage of the application process, which included attending a meeting with some of the buyers. We might have white neighbors on the third floor, and I live on the second floor, and if they come out and see my children, I want them to know that if they speak, that you'll speak back. You know that about them already, you know what I'm saying? They're not going to be the residents that go, you know, like, don't speak to me. You know? Yeah, we've already, so, spoken. We've already spoken. Wade seemed a shoe in. Oh, this is going to be huge. But her application hit a snag. Her on again, off again husband wouldn't pass the drug test, and she knew it. So she found herself in an incredible position her husband on one hand, a brand new home on the other, and Candace Howell in the middle. Can you make exceptions in a case like that? make exceptions for Sherry and then bring in the person next time that had a serious criminal background. They're difficult choices to make. Sherry Wade saw the writing on the wall and made a wrenching choice. She and her children would leave her husband behind. 
I couldn't keep having it happen to the whole family. It wasn't just affecting him, it affected the whole house. Larry Sargent was determined not to let drugs stand in his way either. He goes regularly for counseling at the VA hospital now, a commitment that helped win him a spot at Northtown Village. He packed up his things, packed up his son, and left Cabrini Green for the last time. Then, just a five-minute walk away, he began a new life, the sudden sovereign of a brand-new two-bedroom apartment. It's your bedroom. With a bird's-eye view. Yep, just sit right here and just watch it happen. Well, it was, you know, told years ago that one day all these projects are going to be gone. And I just never thought that it would happen. But it has. But not everyone will be lucky enough to live in a place like Northtown Village. So far, 36 high-rises are gone. But aside from Northtown Village, construction of new replacement housing has barely begun. And even when it's done, there will be 14,000 fewer public housing apartments than when the demolition began. Peter Holston says it's the biggest hitch in the city's plans. What's going to happen to all those other families who fall through the cracks? Well, hopefully they won't fall through the cracks, but you're right. I mean, there is, there is a huge need. In Cabrini alone, um, I believe there are several thousand families left. It's going to be tight. It's going to be really tight. This is a crisis. Mixed income isn't the answer. It's not going to accommodate. It's a fraction of the need. The city's been trying to help others find homes outside public housing with mixed results. Some resentment has been directed at Northtown Village. There's been vandalism and a couple of break-ins. But mostly, the people who live at Northtown Village are focused on settling in. Our next-door neighbor um, moved in about two weeks ago with her uh, couple girls, and they're great. The Tomlinsons say they hope their presence here makes a difference. There's been this cycle of isolation that's gone on for, you know, 30, 40 years, whatever it is. And my hope is that this breaks that cycle. You know, in 20 years from now, I think everybody will be happy we did this. Larry Sargent is glad he did it, as we saw when we went to visit him several months after he moved in. He's been working as a maintenance man for the Holston Group. Look at this. And for the first time, he's proud to call his apartment home. Nice things on the wall. Oh, yeah, I got them from the dollar store. The only thing in here is from the dollar store. It's still a struggle every day, he says, but he hopes the move will give his son the chance he never had. I give him everything I got, you know, so he don't have to be raised like I was. He'll get a chance to see another part of life at a young age, you know, and hopefully he can take it and go from there. You know, and don't fall into no snake pit like I did. Sherry Wade still works hard to make ends meet, but says she's already noticed a change in her children and in herself. We used to go over people's houses to spend the night, and now they want to come home. And I like that. And as a mother, how does that make you feel? Like I'm walking in the right direction. 